everybody. Uh, we're here today for Men's Health Week and I am absolutely delighted from the bottom of my heart to have Mark Brooks here today. So if there's one change maker in the UK, one man who is the glue that binds together all of the fantastic stuff that's happening in terms of health, well-being and happiness of men, then it's Mark. And I'm not joking when I say I think we could dedicate a whole podcast or even a whole series uh, to all the thing, wonderful initiatives he's behind. Um, so I wanted to start, Mark, by saying thank you. Um, oh, it's really important to me. You know, thank you for all that you're doing. Um, I know you dedicate a lot of time and energy to all of this stuff. So a good place to start uh, because you're such an expert in this area. You live and breathe it is, you know, I want to know why should we all be so concerned about men's health? Well, there's a number of reasons, and and thank you, Lynn, for that very kind in, in introduction. And also, it's a team as well. So, you know, I work with a number of people uh, across the UK on these issues. So it's not a one man band. But uh, thank yeah. you very much for that introduction. Why why it matters? Well, basically, we've got a problem in the UK with regard to the number of men who aren't well. So, for example. We've got 13 men every day take their own life through suicide. 33 men every day die of prostate cancer. We've also got um, over 88 men every single day um, die because of a heart related disease. And also one man in five does not reach the age of 65. So we've got an issue there. And, and the key thing is, is not just the impact on those men themselves, but also the impact on their family, um, also their impact on, on their work colleagues, and also the impact on society as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things I've always said, we try and move away from there being, if you like, a competition between genders, because there shouldn't be, is a clear fact that, you know, if men aren't doing well with their health, it means women aren't either. So this is very much an interconnected issue between all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, some really um, disturbing and, and sad statistics there. But, you know, as, as you're pushing for an opportunity to drive change. Um, so I know you gave evidence at the inquiry into men's health this year, and it's brilliant to see that happening. So, you know, it's a topic that's being taken really seriously. Can you tell us what was the purpose of that? And, you know, what do you what do you hope it will lead to as an outcome? Well, well, I'll, I'll be more broad. I'll, I'll go back a step if I may. Mm, of course. What, what, one, one of the things that's been happening in Parliament over the last couple of years is that um, Parliament for a long time has been very behind uh, Parliament and government behind what's actually happening uh, outside the walls of Westminster and Whitehall in the there are issues affecting men and boys in our country from education you can fill Wembley Stadium with a number of men in prison right now for example and also mm -hmm. issues we've talked about in terms of men's health as well um, and those issues are being discussed in the workplace in academia um, in grassroots charities being set up and, and, and but Westminster and Whitehall in the political world has been really far behind. Mm -hmm. And so men and boys issues in general, general just not been discussed. And in fact, sometimes when they're raised, they're actually met with derision um, that, you know, men and boys in the UK don't actually have any problems. So what myself and colleagues, including uh, Nick Fletcher MP, for example, but other MPs as, as well, is that we've been trying to get political traction on a wide range of men and boys issues. So, for example, we wanted to get to a position where um, men's health is recognised as a distinct field of public policy and professional practice in the world of health mm -hmm. in the UK, because it hasn't really been before. So what, what's been happening in Parliament is that we've been raising, uh, there's been debates in particular male specific areas, uh, particularly around cancers, particular male cancers, prostate cancer, for example, but also, you know, making sure the conversation uh, is very inclusive of men around suicide, for example. But also we've been using it to try and get select committee inquiries and we've been lucky 
to be able to persuade the health and social care uh, select committee to actually have an inquiry on men's health which is the first time there's been an inquiry specifically on that what that's meant is that there was over 100 organizations responded to that inquiry put submissions in um, and there was um, three days of uh, discussions and then um, the minister was put on the spot uh, just um, quite recently with regard to why haven't we got a men's health strategy what are we doing to support men's health and also um, a number of other things so we've managed to get um, a men's health ambassador or a promise or a pledge of one we've also had some task and finish groups discussing how to improve men's uh, access accessibility to the health system and also pushing for a clinical director for men's health as well and so what we've done it all sounds very fancy but there's a fancy mm -hmm. word for this political theorist word called uh, the overton window and basically the overton window and you can put this across all marcoms and and everything else is that the overton window is where an issue is seen as being politically or societally unacceptable to discuss suddenly is okay and acceptable to discuss mm. so men's health uh the political world wouldn't didn't want to discuss it it wasn't an issue and we've managed to move it collaboration of loads of organizations and and academics and others we've been able to move it from a, an issue that the world of politics would not discuss to now where the world of politics does discuss and therefore we've moved what's called the overton window it's brilliant brilliant um we'll come on to talk about this later but you know mm. i i think it's also a topic um that's been ignored in uh, marketing communications and in advertising and i hope you know that that's something that we'll see change and i do think there's an undercurrent starting in the same way you know you're, you're getting some momentum now hopefully we'll also see the same the same in that space um but there's also some things happening on the ground aren't there in britain you know you've got a um, huge number of by and for organizations so organizations started by men for men um to really make a difference and those are obviously surfacing from need so you've got you know men's sheds lads need dads uh, andy's talk club so why do you think that's happening and what need are they fulfilling well well th these kind of by and for charities um and, and a, a more technical word in the in the health sector is a social prescription charities i.e mm. that, that men are signposted to them not for a medical prescription but because they offer social connectivity and also a sense of brotherhood and camaraderie amongst amongst men and and the thing is i i think that there's a number of reasons for that i think um one is that the state uh, i.e the health system it's not just the nhs and gps and you know uh, occupations and work workplaces haven't mm. been so adept at actually supporting and recognizing men's health needs so what's happened is that men are very much like uh, women have done as well um have just gone off and set up their own organizations um and it's very much what i would call a counterculture a success story because this isn't um uh this isn't something that british culture has actually sort of said that we need um there's been no top-down narrative from society or from the political world or from employers or or from or from the health system this is men just deciding that they wanted to do something themselves to meet their health needs because they weren't getting that support elsewhere also i think you know I, i'm big on this um i think it's very much kind of part of the way that um that we 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 uh have and i heard this phrase this week uh um about uh the british culture being you know casual anarchy um in terms <laughs> of uh, which i just love in terms <laughs> of um you know i big up the uk you know we are you know especially per head uh, the most creative nation in the world you know yeah. all the creative arts you know um we lead the way um 
and you know including on mark comms as well and branding everything and it's because we have this casual anarchy whether it's because we're an island or whatever it's just we do our own thing and we don't seek permission from the state to do things and you know i've had conversation with colleagues in in um in, in other parts of the world and they've said well before we do this we need to check with whether the government or the state will be happy uh, mm. with us doing that and i'm thinking and they said but in the uk what why do you do these things is well well you know we, we we we're not we're not slaves to the state we do what we want <laughs> within yeah. a framework yes yeah. that's what you know it's a very much creative culture um, we don't seek permission from the state to do anything as such. Um, and so that's why I think these organisations have have grown grown and been started. A, there's a need, but also there's this issue about, well, let's just go off and do things ourselves. Um, and that's why they've been, uh, that's why they've been a success. But also they speak to this thing, I, I call it kind of the how men are type model. Mm. And they're founded on three principles. They're on men's terms um, in terms of like how men want to interact with each other. It's kind of brotherhood, camaraderie, for example, level of anonymity um, as well, especially uh, yeah. for some of those clubs. Um, and also being informal, being shoulder to shoulder, i.e. doing often doing activities together, or walking, talking groups um some aren't quite like that but they're, they're doing activities so they're all based on how men are also they're on men's turf so basically they're they're in groups where they're men coming together sometimes aligned to sports clubs but also they're men only spaces mm. um and they're men only spaces that they've created even if it's meeting up at a community center every sunday every Monday night rather seven o'clock like Andy Mann's clubs or yep. talking clubs and and you know that's and also they're based on how men speak mm -hmm. so they're in men's language um and so there's no formalization around them there's no rules about what you can and can't say per se or how you express yourself which is really important so they're based on this fund fundamental you know principle that I've looked at you know how men are they're not there to try and change men. This is really crucial. If you spend your time trying to change men, um, then um, you'll be you'll be in the same position in a million years. So yeah. men are changing, but you can't force it. Men are evolving, but if you're focused in trying to change men, um, you won't be won't be as successful as as you think you will be. Mm. Well, you know, I, I love the fact that it's community and coming together because mm -hmm. loneliness is a, a big yeah. issue in society, but especially for men. Um, and they're really gaining momentum, aren't they? You know, this is on quite a, a scale now that this change is happening, which is really brilliant to see. So what do you think business leaders can be doing? What would you like to see happening in business to support the health and well-being of male employees? Well, well, first, firstly, I, I think employ, employers um, just need to care about their male employees. Um, they need to, um, and I think, and they need to show that they care. I mean, one of the facts is that you know, ten men every month die um, at the workplace due to a workplace injury. Um, it's ninety-five percent of the total, in fact. But I said we want zero for women and zero for men, so said so it's not competition um yes. but but certainly you need to need to care more and, and one of the things i was challenging at the select committee and i've been challenging the, if you like the dei sector and em employers is that a lot of a lot of the health and well-being safeguarding policies are written by people in white collar roles in offices but how are they reaching the men in the warehouses the men in the factories men on the construction sites so what i've seen is a mismatch in employers writing and producing policies um based on a white collar outlook because they're written by people in white collar roles mm. well actually the most men at risk are those in blue collar roles yes and it's about looking at the lens about employers that a 
you got to care about your male employees but also when you're thinking about how you care about them take yourself out of your office and go on to the go on to the front line um if that's appropriate for, for your business and think about how they're actually affecting men on zero hour contracts you know the the, the people working at three o'clock in the in in the in in the morning for example to keep your business going it's about looking at it through the actual work lived experience of your male employees yes. the other the other issues are around uh making sure that your your staff uh, your um understand better understand how men interact in the workplace so men do worry about having consequence free conversations so if men disclose one of the barriers for men is that if they if they're thinking about disclosing they've got a mental health problem or physical health problem especially as they get older they're worried about having the consequences of that conversation that is if i disclose i've got a mental health problem or there's something uh difficult going on at home if i disclose that to my manager will that mean i will lose my job mm. so um and men still have uh, this very much sense of provider and protector role and so they they won't actually be thinking about oh if i lose my job how will that affect me they'll be thinking about how will it affect my family um and so you've got to create a culture that you care about men but also that you you allow men to actually have consequence free conversations um and also create that space for them mm. the last area is that there are ambassador programs now we're seeing a big growth again part of this whole shift now of men's networks at work so Again, part of the DEI conversation, um, diversity, equality, inclusion conversation is not really included men. Um, and no surprise that suddenly we're seeing um, when research is, is being done about, you know, does, does DEI matter to you as a male or female? Or do you think it, it's a problem for men or discriminates against men? We're seeing those figures go up. And that's partly because um, men aren't being included in the DEI conversation, even yeah. though, you know, I've described all those health issues right at the start. And so therefore, when you're, you're <laughs> thinking about inclusion and you're working that field, you have to in, include men as beneficiaries, not just as participants. And I think that 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 has to that has to change um the point i make and i'm not always most popular for saying it but i've never been one to call popularity um <laughs> is is that um is that you know the whole issue around male allies which are obviously really important and so male allies to women but who's being allies to men mm. and you know unless um and yeah there are uh lots of men at the top but there's huge huge numbers of men at the bottom um and you know we, you can't look at men as just one particular group so um you've got to include men as beneficiaries in the dei conversation and in your work yeah i agree 100 percent. so I, I love some of the phrasing you've used there you know consequence free conversations that's a really easy thing for business to grasp um um, I totally agree, you know, in terms of the employee representative groups you've got, you know, I know there are more again starting mm -hmm. to surface for men, but they definitely need to exist. Uh, and, and you touched on something that's really important, I think, which is communicating in a way that works for your audience. So in terms of the kind of language that you use and where you meet them. Um, so it's it's done in a way that they will engage with and get um uh, and as you say, creating those safe spaces. So I know in your prior role to all of the many things you're involved in these days, um, you were in uh, marketing in the financial services sector and you're even behind an award winning campaign um, for national savings and investments. Um, so I'm really curious to know how you feel about the way in which men and boys are portrayed in advertising today. Well, um it's starting to change um it's it's starting to change and i think 
um, the, 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 the importance of creative content and marketing communications and, you know, whether from branding, advertising through to PR uh, and, 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 and everything is absolutely important to shift in as that over to window and it has mm. absolutely crucial, crucial um, part to play. Not only empowering men and boys to come forward so they feel confident to get support or how they're portrayed positively, but also that impacts on employers, but also again on the political narrative, funding for services. It all hate, helps to sh shape all those different levers of of society and and what what i am starting to see is a move away from uh portraying men as being idiots uh as being kind of toxic i mean you know i could wax lyrical about the gillette advert of about three four years ago for example that actually really damaged their brand continues to <clears> do <throat> so i still will never buy a gillette product mm -hmm. because of that because of that, the, their portrayal of, of all men. Um, and I think um, what we're seeing is a, a shift about having boy and men positive, um, positive uh, mark -ons, helping men to break free of kind of stereotypes and social pressures which are placed on them. Um, and certainly, you, you know, I, I know, um, you know, a lot of work, say from New Macho about, which I really like about th there's this man box. You can argue mm -hmm. about that, but there's no point take, trying to say men you shouldn't be in one man box and then try and put them in another. Um, yes. Which is you know which I think is really important. So we should be having a positive conversation and positive portrayal of men and boys um, and the great things that they do and also how they can actually access support in a practical way and what we're seeing in the marcoms world is that shift um there's loads of adverts i mean we, we've got father's day coming up uh and obviously you know then there's men's health week there's yeah. a phenomenal amount of brands that are actually doing dad friendly adverts across the world it's phenomenal and it's almost like um society and perhaps the political world doesn't really value dads as much but brands do um and what, what i find and also the, the connectivity because like um female partners and sisters and daughters love seeing their dads um or, or brothers etc uh um or partners being bigged up you know, 100%. I, mean, I mean, advertisers, they, you know, um, I'm saying how wonderful dads are and you got a little daughter saying, yeah, I love my dad, etc. You know, I'm going to um, I'm going to feel better about your brand for saying that. Yes. Um, so that that's been that's been a real change over the last uh, five years. In addition, what we're also seeing with the creative content is about I come back to this how men are model. So we've seen, for example, a lot of connectivity between brands and charities and also um, sports clubs, for example. Mm. We've seen some fantastic um, uh, connections. We've seen Man City uh, connection with um, with um, with Andy Mann's clubs. We've seen Norwich City with the Samaritans, same with Chelsea, uh, yep. for example, recently. So we're seeing how brands are innate sports brands are in because these are brands now enabling and working with organizations directly supporting men i think the other thing is is around association and you know um the marcom sector including uh, uh the corporates commissioning marcom's agencies to get those messages right um because there is now a real appetite for male positive uh, Marcoms, and we're starting to see that shift in 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 the branding. Um, and they're boy positive. They're not seeing men as being a problem because the narrative that we've had quite a, for, for some years is that, broadly speaking, that all women have problems, all men are problems. Um, based, and we're moving away from that. And I think yeah. the, the more that we see. Um, brands jump on that and push that forward the better the last point I would say is around 
that there's a lot of talk about the kind of stereotypes about stereotypes of men but one of the things about shaping the society because often some of the narrative i've seen is like oh it's all men's fault men shouldn't be like this men shouldn't be providers and protectors etc and, and all of that pressure but that pressure is coming from society from women as well as men and i think again that conversation about changing society first rather than trying to change men because if you try and change men before you change society, you're just going to continue to have friction and men being more lost in the world. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, um, you nailed it there on what you were saying. I think there has been a lot of uh, implicit bashing of yeah. men, as you're saying, you know, men are men are the problem. Yeah. Um, a single mum of two young boys. And I don't want them to feel that way. I want them to be inspired and as you see see lots of positive role models and in the work that we do at Kantar we've got mm. really hard evidence that shows when you portray men positively it's not only the right thing for um society because as you say you know how you see yourself portrayed in advertising um you know how I see men and boys portrayed in advertising it all shapes how we interact with each other what we expect from our lives and how we think we should show up um, but when you get that right, it makes a positive difference, but it also delivers better commercial results. So those those ads are more effective commercially. You know, you've got fantastic ads like um, Cadbury with their generosity mm -hmm. campaign. And they've got, you know, two many, many wonderful ads because they portray people authentically. But the garage ad where, you know, dad turns up. Yes. Yeah. I, I hear so many men saying how how they love that, but not just men. You know, everybody appreciates these ads and seeing, I think, a, a really wide variety of ways in which men can live happy lives. Um, you know, yes, it's really important we see dads in a caring capacity um, and being positive about dads and recognising their importance. Um, but this is an intersectional thing, isn't it? Multidimensional. There's lots of different ways to live life as a as a good, happy man. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I mean, the, the links or acts as it is in America, I mean, they produce some brilliant adverts, um, adverts as well. Um, mm. You know, so so there, there's been this a real move of this kind of creative uh, content. And again, that really helps to shape society and you kind of bring in men with you. Right. And you're not talking at men. You're not trying yes. to force, force some form of you know narrative and 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 the thing is i mean you're not you're not going to have men you know helping broader society and you know helping women and girls for example if if you're if you're showing them in a negative light um so so i think that's really important i mean i saw some you know worrying statistics uh uh quite recently i mean mm. one one um was that uh, just over 40 percent of uh, sixth form boys and girls have been told in a school lesson that young men are a problem to society. Yeah. So, I mean, what sort of message are you giving boys, teenage boys especially, about yeah. what their role is in life? But also another campaign I'm involved in, International Men's Day, and, you know, I'm, I'm the kind of national ambassador on that with a, a range of other colleagues. And that's been, a, again, another counterculture counter success story. But what we see in schools is that International Women's Day, um, about 40% of schools do something for International Women's Day, which, of course, is brilliant. It should be hundreds. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing yeah, wrong yeah. with that. Um, but for International Men's Day, um, it's about a third of that figure. So, again, you're, if you're a, you know, a lad in school, uh, say a mixed school, and there's lots of stuff around International Women's Day, but then it comes to International Men's Day, which is... 19th of November and it's people do stuff around that day if you suddenly think well why isn't there anything on International Men's Day about um saying you know about positive male role mm. models for example or pushing promoting careers especially non-male traditional careers then uh for example you're going to feel again well you know no one really cares about me I'm a boy um I'm a young man I've got problems um, or the school doesn't care, my family isn't very proactive, uh, um, my local community isn't. And so what do you end up doing? You end up going on 
uh, going on YouTube and finding people like Andrew Tate, etc., cetera, for, for answers because yes. no one else seems to be caring much about you. And again, creative content through Marcom sector really helps to actually make sure that those boys and teenage um, boys and young men actually feel good about themselves if they're being portrayed in the positive light. So one end you've got the dads, but I think we need to see far more advertising um, and far more branding and Marcoms actually targeted at boys and young men um, and showing them in a positive light, because that is where there is a real uh, problem. There's a real problem about boys and young men um, not being in employment or in education or training, yep. not feeling good about themselves, feeling that nobody cares, nobody's talking about those issues, no one's supporting them. You know, boys are behind girls every single stage of education. Um, yes. And yet no one seems to want to talk about that. So mm. I think I would suggest that I think there has for the Marcoms industry um, and creative content uh, and, and the creators of that, I think there needs to be a real switch or a real focus in the last in the next five years of real boy and young men positive content that will really help those boys and young men move on in their life um because that's what i feel is is lacking dads okay. is, is focused on because you know perhaps dads and uh the people they're around have, have, have got a bit more money so they might have more you know ability to buy um but i think you, you know i think brands uh, especially part of their social responsibility work and dei work should actually be focused on positive can do messages for boys and young men yeah yeah as you say there's this um there's a void isn't there about mm. the manosphere and you know these negative um manfluences are mm. are filling um but we should be filling that as you're saying instead with a feeling of being valued uh, mm. and as you say portraying pe portraying young men and boys in a positive way um and giving them a path so you talked earlier about the importance of you know, the way in which these buy and for organisations have been set up works for men because it's done in a way that is um, totally tailored to their needs because it's created by them and yeah. for them. But, you know, I know through what I do in helping brands develop communications that the same is true when it comes to creating effective communication. You've got to really understand your audience to be able to portray them in this authentic way. Yeah. Um, how do you think? you know, brands and businesses can get closer to to that. I mean, it's something we help with, but I think, you know, there's, I feel like there's this opportunity to get closer and engage with some of these buy and for organisations in the way you've talked about, say, with, you know, Andy's Man Club and, and Man City, for example. Well, well, well I, think, I, think there's, I think there's a number of uh, ways. Um, the first way, I'll be quite bold, most of these organisations are skin. Mm -hmm. they have, so they are I mean, I mean you know in my southeast london direct vernacular um they they haven't got much money yeah um and often uh they're very volunteer run um and i think that there is a, a real opportunity for brands to get to support those organizations either through sponsorships, you know, uh, donations, fundraising, for example, and, you know, donations as tax benefits for those as well. Yep. Corporates, he says shamelessly. Um, <laughs> but but um, I'm not plugging anyone, particularly one, <laughs> as you will notice, Liz, yes. so I'm being circumspect on that. Um, of course. But, but, but also um, a lot of them will be, interested in any pro bono content as well so um i mean uh you, you know well, well i will plug one but not shamelessly for any sponsorships but so but for example one of the charities involved in domestic abuse charity mankind initiative yes i mean um 10 years ago we had a promo i had this concept around um a male uh 
about men and women where it was filmed in um, Bloomsbury Square in central London. And I had this concept about you get a, a man abusing a woman in the street and see what happens, I what the public do, and then later reverse the scenario yes and see what happened and uh that was as 10 years old this year and we did that and sadly you got well sad good and sad so you got good that when the, the chaps abusing the woman lots of people intervene so that's you know good and yes you safely trying to you know ask supportively but when it was reversed um an hour later same actors people were laughing and not taking it seriously yeah. um and the reason i say that is that that advert was done pro bono by a um uh, this is their their creative agency so so what i'm saying is is that all of those organizations buying for organizations um would really if you do pro bono work or you've got people on work experience interns you want to give them a specific project um, those um, organisations uh, would greatly, greatly welcome that, especially yes. uh, in terms of social media, creative content. And there's a lot of synergy. I mean, a lot of the organisations, the men's organisations, have got uh, quite a lot of really good, strong men's brands, uh, DIY, tools, construction, uh, coming in and partnering them. But they're looking for others because they don't, again, they don't want to be just a stereotype so i think the sponsorships donations um also pro bono work uh, in terms of creative content um but also just they're looking for you to help that overall man positive conversation because yeah. if you're so at a holistic level talked about quite tactical issues but strategic holistic level they're just wanting you to continue pushing this boy positive, male positive um, uh, narrative, because that will in, empower more men to come to their organisations for help. And it will also make it even more acceptable for those organisations to exist. And there's such yeah. an eclectic mix. I mean, I found out uh, the other week that there's a grumpy old men's club down in Devon. <laughs> you know, and then there's a pie club up in Newcastle. And so as ever with guys, you know, we don't stick to the rules. And it's like, um, we just, you know, a bit random, really. And yeah. you think, oh, well, let's have a grumpy old men's club. Um, Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I suspect it will be um in terms of all, all those other clubs that have been spreading quickly i suspect that one will, will, <laughs> will, will, will sell be the biggest acceleration <laughs> just need to speak to my dad you know you know i spoke to my dad uh, about it and he said where, where, where's my local one <laughs> <laughs> yeah Anyways. i mean I was, I was amazed recently i went back home so i grew up in lancashire in a little village um just outside blackpool and there was a sign you know in this small village of men getting together you know we have men's club on this day I, I was so like I wanted to take a photo of it um and then even in the local village where I am now it's tiny um uh, but they had a uh, man's breakfast on a Saturday oh. you know uh, and um there's a, an older guy who lives across the road his wife's got dementia I was talking to him about you know how, how it feels to be a carer and how he's coping mm. and I thought isn't it brilliant you know, his daughter was coming to look after her mum so he could have that time and have that space to be supported by a local community of men. Um, so even just here, you can see how those things make a real difference. And I love how you've talked in really practical ways of things that businesses can do to help. Um, but also how in how brands show up and how brands, how businesses run we can start to get momentum and really change the dynamic of, of positivity around mm -hmm. um, being a man and a boy. So I touched there on some of the things that men can do to kind of support each other uh, when it comes to men's health. What would you like to see happening? You know, whether it's your father, your brother, your son, um, your husband, your partner, um, what, what can men do to support each other? I, I think I think they just need to look out for each other um, mm. more. Um, in terms of getting across 
to the men in their life that, that if those men have a particular issue that it's okay for them to talk to them about it that's the key thing because men men worry about what the reaction will be from others um if they open up about a particular issue they worry about they'll be laughed at or be brushed aside that they need to grow a pair for example yeah and i think so what men i think more men and men are doing this i mean i, I certainly notice it all the time now men just to, need to make sure that they get across to the men in their life that they're there for them um they don't have to put any pressure on them but they just want to talk about you know keep asking those open-ended questions you know how's things at the moment the question about how are you out of one to ten uh, yes brilliant which is you know talk clubs uh, for example um just ask how's things at work you know how's things at home how are you doing etc um but don't do it directly do it as part of a conversation so mm. if you're talking about football for example which you know uh me and my friends talk about endlessly um you know just part of the conversation is you know you know how's things at work so don't or how's at home um don't start off when you get in a beer and sit down how are you you talk about the football for like 20 minutes if not longer yes yeah. and then and then drop it into the conversation yes. yeah and by just having those asking those questions here and there it goes off in a kind of men's spidey sense um in terms of thinking well this is somebody i know that i can have a conversation with if i'm if i am if i've got a particular problem so it's about asking your fellow men but in a non-confrontational non-direct uh way brilliant um and what can other people do um you know because i think men supporting men is important but you know i, I also I'm trying to do my bit in supporting um, men and making a difference through the ways that I can. But, you know, through our conversations, through our relationships, what can other people be doing to support men? Well, I think partly is, is again, showing that you, showing that you care. Um, also having those uh, conversations that I mentioned, but also bigging up any of your male friends or partners about, you know, saying thanks to what for, for what they're doing. Yes. You know, uh, celebrating their successes and just being a positive energy to be around. But also one of the things I talk about in some of our work on uh, domestic abuse is about having your spidey sense attuned to thinking about is there a man that I know who may be having a problem? and making sure your spidey sense is attuned to men having problems yes um so so because one of the things the challenges i've seen in domestic abuse field is that people are attuned to recognizing that perhaps potentially a daughter or or their um or their sister uh, for example or a female friend could be in a toxic relationship you know they haven't seen their friend you know daughter or sister for a year and they've got a new guy or new woman and it's kind of like well actually that's not healthy mm. but what i've found is that and speaking to lots of people is their spidey says sense isn't as attuned to picking up that when it comes to their brother or their son or a male friend so i they don't recognize it for years oh i haven't seen him for a year oh he must be loved up but if it was their daughter or their sister they wouldn't think that yes yeah, does that make yeah. sense so oh, I think, does, yes. I think, so i think it's about having our spidey sense uh more attuned to thinking about men who could be having problems and then asking those questions so it's yeah. that professional and personal curiosity it's absolutely yes. important yeah looking at people and caring and as you're saying you know trusting your spidey sense i think yes. um and i think awareness of you know these issues and how they mm. that um, that men are impacted by things like domestic abuse yeah. um you know is really important and, and and helps um so what do you do yourself mark to look after your own health uh what, what do i do to look after my yeah, yeah. I, I knew you were gonna ask well i didn't <laughs> i worried you might do um well well the main, the main thing i do uh um 
I, I do. I mean, there's a number of things. A, uh, life's just mad. Uh, yeah. Lo doing loads of things. But I always make sure I have a day off at the weekend, at least a day off. Um, go out with my wife or, you know, watch the football, et cetera. So it's really important. But one thing I do, uh, actually, um, and I, I do have to bribe my wife with a curry every Saturday night. So uh, <laughs> just to put up with uh, me being on a computer, you know, in the evenings, firing off emails or, or writing, et cetera. Um, but also um, I, I go out with my uh, male friends. So I, I'm... Uh, I won't reveal my age per se, but I've got some school friends. We've been friends for over 40 years now. So every six weeks we go out for a walk, like mm -hmm. a long walk, uh, about 10 miles. Uh, and, and that's really, really good. And we, we always we always look forward to that uh, walk. And so that's we fun. just chat about football and everything else. But But the only downside is that it's obviously meant to be healthy as well, but the fact that we start off by going to McDonald's is, um, and then we buy, <laughs> and then we've always got chocolate, and then we normally end up with end up with eating a uh, uh, fish and chips and, and an ice cream at the end. So actually, although it's meant to be uh, a walk to keep fit, I think we 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 certainly put on more calories. But the key thing is, it's great for our mental health and our camaraderie. Yes and brotherhood between between the, you know myself and my my three schoolmates who've been you know been we've been there for each other for a long long time and actually one of the one of my um one of the chaps has uh, just got prostate cancer and he's just recovering yeah. so you know we've mm. obviously been rallying around you know we haven't been going out for walks but certainly been going around uh sitting in his house watching the football and the horse racing so we even but we've specifically sort of made sure that we've done that and maybe um we wouldn't have been so um doing that so much if we weren't regularly going out for those walks yes so that yeah. that's that's a long ramble but it's you know um making sure i've got time for me and my wife and also um regular uh catch-ups with, with, with my with my um mates from school that's wonderful i love what you do and um I think you should be proud of your your age and your life experience. Someone taught me that recently, you know, and all that you bring with that. So I think one thing I'd love to see is more focus on International Men's Day this year. So you talked about that. I know you you lead driving that in the UK. So if people want to get on board and they want to make it a thing, how can they do that? Well, um, best plus place to start is going on our website, which is ukmensday.org.uk. Um, 800 organisations were involved uh, last year in the UK, uh, the most anywhere in the world. And uh, we've, it's been a real success in driving um, employers and brands, driving um, men's health uh, and support and showing you care about the men uh, in your life and in your workplace and in society. It's very much counterculture success story and everybody's invited, men and women. Brilliant. So come on, everybody watching, listening, come on board. Let's make it a big thing this year. And um, just want to close again by thanking you, Mark, for all you do. And um, for those of you that don't know Mark, he's a chair of the Mankind Initiative, which is the domestic abuse charity focused on men that he referenced. Co-founder and trustee of the Men's and Boys Coalition charity. And yeah, you know, I I really want to get involved in this. Yeah, I can see how bringing together interested parties, academics, professionals, you know, charities um, working to make a difference, coming together to really provide a direction for change and share what's going on. Um, and then, as we've just talked about, you know, lead organiser and ambassador for International Men's Day. So uh, thank you for shining bright and making a difference. And thank you so much for your time and everything you've brought to our conversation today. Absolute pleasure, Lynn. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.